<laughs> we've officially hit the 1,000 subscriber Thank mark. Thank you so much for your support. In honor of that, we decided to release this uh, week the video of the cute things Germans do. So we hope you enjoy it. Oh boy, Germans can be cute sometimes. And in this video, we're going to talk about the six cutest things that I've seen Germans do. <laughs> hey, I'm Jen. And I'm Yvonne. And we're from SimpleGermany.com, where we help expats settle into life in Germany more smoothly. smoothly. So, Yvonne. Yvonne, if you don't know, she's my German wife. And she's uh, here to help us clarify uh, or give a little bit more background into the cute things I have seen, right? <laughs> we can be so cute. You can be so cute sometimes. I'm kidding. Yeah, you can be so cute. So thing number one, the famous Schultute. Did I pronounce what? that right? Schultute? Schultute. Ah, there we go. Thank you very much. <laughs> For me, it sounds the same. But I know the Germans out there are going to think there's a big difference. But okay, let's get to the point. So I remember, I think I heard about this the first time from a coworker because his uh, little girl was going to start school. And then he like, I would say like three days later, he was freaking out in the office. He's like, guys, guys, guys. I three heard days it. later? Three days before, sorry. Yeah. Uh, he was like screaming around the office, like, guys, guys, like, I heard there's this like schultute thing that I have to prepare for my daughter. What is it? What should I do? All of us expats sitting there were like, uh... Uh, I don't know. And I think a German came up and clarified, and this is the explanation. Tell me, what is the Schultüte? So a Schultüte, you have a picture here, um, is, um, well, it's a cone, uh, usually made out of paper. Um, and usually, I mean, if you are a kid and you go to school in Germany, you're probably around six years old. Uh, and then the Schultüte usually is like this big, so it's like bigger than you almost. And it's, um, it's a cone made out of paper, beautifully decorated, obviously, with tons of stuff inside. So it's, it's a tradition that you get on your first day of school. Um, but is it only like for the first grade, right? Yes. Not very, kindergarten. No, is like your very okay. first day of, of school, uh, for elementary school. Uh -huh. um, and what is inside? That's the big question. Well, that depends a bit on your family, I would say. Um, usually there are things uh, like stationery that help you in school. Like, you know, as a kid, when you get your, 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 your beautiful little... Um, I don't even know the English term for that, but... Um, ah, this this bag that you pull out your pencils exactly, and stuff? Exactly, yeah, yes. Yeah. I don't know the name actually, but you know, that, like the bag that you, know, you put the pencils and markers and e ruler and whatever. E okay. Exactly. So as a kid, you should be super proud of because it has the same design as your backpack for school because you have a very special backpack for school. <laughs> um, and some sweets, uh, sometimes money, um, some little toys uh, that you always wanted. So it's just pretty much... Um, gifts in the middle of the year because school usually starts around July, August. Okay. Um, and you, of course, carry that shoe to, to, to school. And when do you open it then? I, actually, I don't remember now if I'm saying nonsense or not. But um, you get it before <laughs> school. Uh, you probably take some things to school. People ask you, and what was in your shoe to? Um, it's, a, it's a tradition and it's very oh. cute. And then there's usually like the welcoming, you know, for the for the new kids and you get assigned to your class and then you have this class picture, everyone holding the ah, shoe tutor. Oh, cool. Super yeah. interesting. Yeah. My coworker friend, he was like, should I put like, what do I put? Do I put an iPad? Do I put a computer? Like, what do I put Whoa. in the shoe <laughs> Yeah, but I'm glad we clarified that. I think he, he I think he nailed it because the next day we asked and, and the kid was very happy. So I think that was a good thing. Good job. So number two on my list, which I think, I believe it's a regional thing. I'm pretty sure some Germans I would might, say so too, yeah. may comment later uh, down if it's if your region has something Help similar. Us out here, yeah. But it's the Maibaum, it's yes. called here in the Rhineland. And I discovered this for the very first time. Uh, so Ivan originally comes from Bonn, yeah. right? Ivan from Bonn. Ivan uh -huh. from Bonn. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to Bonn with Ivan. <laughs> and uh, it was... When was it? It doesn't matter where it was, uh, when it was. But I saw these like uh, birch trees hanging uh, next to... Um, to, to houses and they had like decoration on them, right? And then you told me a very cute story about them. Yeah, and uh, just to refer back to the regional thing, here in Düsseldorf it's not that common. So it's, um, uh, it is a regional thing. Uh, help us out in what other regions in Germany you do that. But uh, what is it behind the Maibaum? So um, usually the 1st of May, it's a holiday here in Germany. Mm -hmm. So that um, the, the night before, so um, the night before, it's called also Dance into the May, where usually again... Ah, Tanz in May. Tanz yeah. in May, yeah. yeah in where um, girls go out together to dance into the May and boys meet up with their male friends um, to actually, yeah, cut down the Maibaum, uh, carry the Maibaum and decorate the Maibaum um, in front of the house of their loved ones. However, the cute... No, the loved ones, no, like the girls that they have a crush other. on. That's significant other, okay. yes. However, the cute thing is um, exactly that. It's when you're young, it's usually done also by your secret 
if you have a secret crush. So sometimes girls wake up on the 1st of May and at the house, obviously where the parents also live, they have a Maibaum with their name on it. Because you usually put like a heart on it as well and write the name of the girl on it. Okay. And then of course they get, you know, they're like, either they have an idea who it is and they're like, all like blushy and like happy <laughs> or that's like, who the hell is this from? So it's, um, it's a very cute, like romantic gesture, uh -huh. um, which obviously takes a lot of effort because I think there are tons of places that like already pre-chop the trees and sell them. It has okay. to be a birch tree, like no other trees allowed. Ah, okay, so specific tree. Yeah, yeah it has yeah. to be a birch tree. They usually decorate it like with a colorful um, a crab paper in mm -hmm. the in the in the branches, and like I said, something. I think with you mean craft paper. Crab. <laughs> <laughs> I feel crab paper is a in different thing. In German, it is crab papier. <laughs> Yeah, um, and uh, it's just a very cute thing. However, now comes the important part. This birch tree uh, stays at the house um, one month, the entire May. Um, oh, okay. And at the end of May, uh, the tradition has it, if I know correctly, um, that the boy who put it also has to take it off again. And then has to kind of like... Oh, reveal himself? Reveal himself, yeah, because I know it that when... We had one at our house that the guy who put it got a crate of beer from my dad as a thank you. Huh. But I don't know if it's a secret crush, if that would actually happen. Huh. Let us know in the comments what you think about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> however, very important, in the night of putting up the tree, there is like this unwritten rule that until 2 or 3 a.m., I think, um, you have to protect the tree that you put up because if you don't, any other guy can come and steal it and put it to 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 his secret crush or, or special special. Other. Oh wait, what do you mean? So so either I can still, let's say I'm a guy and I have a crush on someone, I can steal that other guy's my bomb and put it yes. on my. Yeah, if I'm too lazy to like go through oh. all the work oh, and okay. I see a tree unprotected until, like I said, I'm not sure that two or three a.m. I can steal it. So that's huh. why usually like um, boys team up and they sometimes they come with their tractors and I don't know what because obviously they have to transport those trees. Right. Um, so it's like for them it's a super <laughs> Fun night out. And I have a question. And what happens if two boys have a crush on the same girl? Yeah, maybe they're two two trees. I don't know. Oh, I don't know okay. if then one if, if you know also one is faster than the second one then shies away. I have no idea. You have okay. to ask the boys. However <laughs> Boys, how, do you do my bounce and do you have information? <laughs> however, now comes the even more interesting part. Um if it is a leap year, a schalt year, you know, which uh -huh. happens every fourth, uh, every fourth year, okay. um, then it, it turns around and it's the girl's turn oh. to put the tree up for the boy. Oh, that's interesting. So okay. that is super interesting and super huh. cute, yeah. Did you ever get a Maibaum? Um, not a real Maibaum, no. My sister got tons, but I actually um, never. I, oh. Yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Um, you'll get one from me one day, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so number three on my list, another cute thing, is uh, when the kid is born, I have realized actually this more in rural areas, more than in the city, it's uh, very common that there's some decoration in front of the house or the apartment where this happened, right? Yeah. Um, and I find that super cute. So do you have more information about that? Well, I mean, as far as I know, it's usually decoration involving a, a stork. Um, because ah, true, legend, story, legend yeah. has it that the, the new babies get bored by the stork. Yeah. So, uh, you know, also sometimes if, um, you see another saying here, another idiom, if people want to um, say that they had a newborn, uh, they say something like um, the stork flew by or something like this. Ah, okay. um, so it's, I don't, know the, I don't know the legend behind it, but I just know the legend has it that um, storks bring new, deliver new babies. And so the house gets decorated by a stork, usually like that drops a little bag with like a bun, bu bundled up uh, yeah. the baby uh, with a name on it. And it's just to, to show the neighborhood um, that, yeah, they have a new baby and it's celebrated and um, it's really cute. Yeah, that is super cute. I guess also maybe when neighbors see this, well, obviously neighbors might know, but then they might bring presents yeah. and stuff, right? Yeah. yeah, it's like an announcement to the community. Hey, we have a new baby. Yeah. I find that super cute as well. Oh my God, number four is my favorite one ever. I love telling this story. <laughs> And it's the typical, I think that's just maybe a me thing that I, that I found this, uh, <laughs> but is I would like to, I have named this the your lips. Yeah. You're not supposed to say it beforehand. Well, I said it and I'm going to explain yeah. it why. Okay. So I remember for the very first time that we went to Yvonne's parents' house, uh, we spent there a weekend. And then uh, throughout this weekend, I realized something very curious about Yvonne's dad that he would do. And it would usually go like this, right? We were probably eating and then maybe Yvonne's mom was like, uh, do you want another wurst or another like sausage? And then my father and I would go like, yo, yo, I'll take another wurst. 
And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe that's his way of saying yes. So, no, you know, I was paying a lot of attention to get to know them a bit better. Also, my German was not so good, so I was, like, paying attention to what they would do, right? Then maybe the next day, like, do you want a little bit more wine? Yo, yo. And, and it would always happen that the lips came first and then came the yes, right? And I was like, oh, okay, I got to know him a little bit better. Now I know that when he says this, he's not so convinced, but it's a, it's a yes thing, right? Then like a week later or two, I was at the Metzger, at the Metzger, at the butcher shop here in Germany. And then uh, this one guy comes up and is like, I would like half a kilo of Hackfleisch. Of, how is Hackfleisch? Ground mean? beef. Ground beef. Thank you very much. <laughs> so the woman, you know, like she, she, she sorted the, the ground beef. And then it was like not half a kilo, but like 0.6 or whatever. And so she asked, hey, sorry, I, it's kind of like 0.6, do you still want it? And the guy went, yeah, I'll take it. <gasps> and I was like, whoa, this is the second guy that does this. Like, do, 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 do all men do this, right? The third story to finish the trilogy is that I was in the supermarket, right? And then the cashier asked uh, the, the person paying, do you want cash back? That, like, do you want to take money with your purchase? And this woman replied with, yeah, I'll take 50 euros. And then I realized this is a German thing. When Germans actually are not so convinced, right? And they, they have this moment of doubt thinking it through, they go, yo. yo. <laughs> so I find that super cute. And actually, if you are German, pay attention to yourself or others, or if you are <laughs> an expat here, and I promise you, you do it all the time. <laughs> all the time. Yo, yo, yo. It's like, mm, yo. <laughs> That's my favorite one. Sometimes even without the yaw, and if someone asks you something, you're just like, like pointing like, yeah, I feel it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so number five on the list. I also find this super cute. Um, although to be honest, maybe I have never realized this moment happened, but now that I think about it, it has happened. But anyways, but it's the official transition of a German when you go from Z to do. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. So in the German language, right, you have two ways to, to speak to someone. Like yes. the super, like, um, how do you call this? Like the super respectful way, which formal is way, formal yeah. way, Z, mm -hmm. which in Spanish we have the same, right? It's usted. Uh, in other languages, I think, also you have. In English, it's just not common. No, in French, just you also you. have it. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then there's like the, like the friendlier way or informal, which is du, mm -hmm. right? And also in Spanish, tu, and I guess French. Tu. Yeah. <laughs> However, what is super cute in Germany is that uh, we were talking about this the other day, the other day, but you can help me a little bit. I think it's only at work that this happens. It's mainly at work. I mean, in a, in a, in a normal setting, um, you would always a stranger. You would always um, address with a Z, mm -hmm. and if that stranger then is uncomfortable or is like you know cool or I don't know what and doesn't like to be Z because it's very formal, I okay. say no, no, do me or say the first name, call me that. Um, so they already put it out of the way. Okay. However, what you are trying to, to emphasize here is um, what tends to happen at work um, when the company language is formal uh, in a German company and it's, it's Z, mm -hmm. um, that, uh, you know, you always, yeah, call your, your, your bosses. So in my, for me, it happened to me. How about, the, how about I tell my story? Yeah, tell your it story. It happened to me. <laughs> um, that uh, I came from the cruise ships, you know, everything is totally, like English speaking cruise ships is totally like informal and you hear everywhere and also the guests with the first name and I don't know what. Not all guests. Anyways, <laughs> um, and I, I got to this German company, which was international, uh, and I thought was also very um, low-key and informal. Nah, little did I know. It was very formal, so especially to the bosses. My co-workers were all first name, but my, my bosses were all Herr, Frau, and the surname. Okay. And uh, I mean, I got used to it. It's okay. It's a German thing. Um, but funnily enough, then I realized that I kind of had two teams, that in one team, um, half of my co-workers were, were, got the do from my boss, whereas the other half I belong to got the Z. So that was confusing because then it was not one straight rule, but like half were dude and half were Z. Um, so one sentence, it's uh, the first name for one person and the Frau and last name for me. And it's like, huh? Well, how does that make sense? So much so that uh, I observed, of course, and um, it's a trust thing. So after one and a half years, wow. um, this boss finally approached me at uh, a dinner that we had with a, with a team and um, lifted a glass to me and said, call me Susan. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So, so she made a real point. Everyone at the table noticed and paid attention. Wow. And then it was like, yay, you know what? You made it. You also now do. Woo, you got the trust. You, you know, she respects you and I don't know what and blah. 
And I was like, wow. That is crazy. But, I wonder if this is a common thing for everyone or is it just like her her way of, of I, I don't know. I, I mean, there is this transitioning and usually it's, it's why do we count it as a cute thing? Because usually it's... Um, like they, they make a big deal out of it yeah. because it should be noticed you should understand the importance of it yeah and um you should also feel like a bit um no, uh, like humbled circle, right? and, yeah. and 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 yeah and and nice about it so it's like lifting the glass and say you can now call me do and my wow. first name oh yeah. yeah i find that super cute too i mean in in spanish whenever you start with uh the z or the usted right like it remains like that forever there is no ever transition at work or nothing that you you like get upgraded to a do. So I find that super cute, actually. Very interesting, yeah. And the sixth one on our list, the last one, which is the Kaffee und Kuchen. <laughs> <laughs> I find this so, so, so cute and actually so awesome because the fact that you can actually eat cake like at 2 p.m. is so nice. I actually wonder if other cultures do this as well. But um, Do we want to explain what it is? Yeah, so the Kaffee und Kuchen, which is actually true, which means <laughs> coffee and cake. <laughs> it's a... Uh, You explain it because you're the German. Well, I mean, I never found it as cute as you pointing it out. It's just a thing that Germans do. They meet for coffee and kuchen, usually on the weekend. Um, I would say in some families, it's also quite common that uh, they bake their cake themselves for the weekend. Um, we, are like we in my family, we actually only do it for special events, like maybe a birthday or Christmas or, or Christmas, something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you sit down in the afternoon, um, two, three, four-ish, I don't know. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Three-ish, I would say. And, uh, yeah. and uh, it's a it's a Zwischenmahlzeit. It's like a, a in meal, between meals. A, in between meals, exactly. Oh. But it's a very um, again homey thing. You chit chat. You talk about you know what's going on, and it's um, a coffee and kuchen setting. It oh. means it's very gemütlich. Gemütlich. So very comfortable, very cozy, very homey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, there's I've seen some coffee shops in Germany called Kaffee und Kuchen. So that's you know yeah. goes to the extent of how like popular it is. <laughs> I find that super cute. Well, super cute because I get to eat cake, right? That's yeah. that's. But you also say, hey, let's meet for coffee and kuchen. Yeah. It's like you know. Yeah. Not for a beer, but coffee. Not and for food. a drink. Yeah. Not for yeah. dinner. For coffee and kuchen. Yeah. So that's super cute. <laughs> so that is number six and last item on our list. We hope if you're German, you also find these things cute. And if not, well. Sorry about that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> If you like this kind of video, make sure to hit that like button and that uh, subscription button and that notification button. Hit all the buttons and down on the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we hope to talk to you next Monday when we release our next video. Yep. Until then, cheers! cheers.